You might be familiar with your crush replying like this, but there was an extreme form of such replies in ancient Greece. Let me explain. We are talking about none other than the legendary Spartans. So, Alexander the Great's father, Philip, was on a conquering spree and sent a message to Sparta saying, You are advised to submit without further delay. For if I bring my army into your land, I will destroy your farms, slay your people, and raise your city. Philip's message was long and threatening, but the Spartans had just one word to say in response. If. Philip must have been devastated. The reply actually worked. Philip did not attack Sparta. Welcome to Top 10. This is interesting facts about. Oh, by the way, talking of the statues, they weren't actually this white. All the statues are white marble. They were once painted with bright colors. It is only due to aging that the colors have faded. Did you know that Greece had an identity crisis back in the day? Yup, they were like, we don't want to be called Greece, that's just too basic. So they went ahead and called themselves Hellas. But guess what? The Romans came along and were like, nah, we don't like that name. We're just gonna call you Greece. And that's how Greece got its name. After all that confusion, Greece decided to change its official name to the Hellenic Republic. Woo! Talk about commitment to a name change. Picture this. You've got your eyes on the most beautiful woman in all of ancient Greece. So what's the best way to win her heart? Simple. Just grab an apple and throw it her way. But don't throw it too hard, or you might end up giving her a concussion instead of a proposal. If she manages to catch the apple, congrats. You're now betrothed, but if she misses, don't jump to conclusions. Maybe she's just not great at catching apples, or maybe she's got a lot on her mind. After all, being a gorgeous woman in ancient Greece was not so easy. The people in ancient Greece didn't have access to toilet paper. Instead, they used flat stones, pebbles, and ceramic pieces, also known as pesoi. Can you imagine using a rock to clean yourself after going to the bathroom? Ouch but that's not even the worst part. According to the British Medical Journal, using these rough objects may have caused skin irritation and even external hemorrhoids over time. Yikes. Yikes! It's hard to imagine how uncomfortable that must have been. Did you know that the ancient Greeks had not one, but two different concepts of time? They used the words chronos and kairos to differentiate between them. Chronos is the time that we typically know and measure today. You know, seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. It's all about the quantitative nature of time. But what about Kairos? Well, that's where things get interesting. Kairos signifies the right or opportune time for action. It's all about the quality of the moment rather than the quantity of time that has passed. Ancient Pythagoreans considered Kairos to be one of the most fundamental laws of the universe. So deep, isn't it? Even Aristotle, the great philosopher, recognized the importance of Kairos in his scheme of rhetoric. He believed that Kairos is the time and space context in which the proof will be delivered. Marathon. Yes, the popular running event Marathon. But how did it get its name? It is believed that after the Battle of Marathon in 490 BC, a Greek messenger named Philippides ran from the city of Marathon all the way to Athens to announce the good news of their victory. Now, I know what you're thinking. How far could that be, right? Well, my friends, it was more than 40 kilometers, and Philippides died from exhaustion soon after delivering the news. Tragic. Talk about dedication to the job. After an ancient Greek athlete completed their event, they would get rubbed down with olive oil and scrape off all the grime, sweat, and oils from their body into a bottle. And voila! Did I pronounce it correct? Voila. Anyway, they had a bottle of magical anti-inflammatory potion to sell. It was like a flea market for bodily fluids. I mean, who needs a doctor when you can just scrape some athlete's sweat off your skin, right? It's hilarious to think about it now, but it was a serious business back then. Ancient Greeks were not only masters of philosophy and art, but they also invented the first computer. Well, not this one. Scholars were able to make sense of their computer only in the 1990s, even though they found it around 1900s. That's almost a century. The Greeks were really smoking something, weren't they? The Antikythera mechanism, built over 2,000 years ago, is considered the world's first analog computer. It was designed to predict astronomical events like solar or lunar eclipses with incredible precision. The ancient Greeks came up with the first vending machine. Now, before you think it was dispensing chocolate bars and sodas, let me tell you that it was actually dispensing holy water. The coin-operated device was used in the absence of a priest to ensure that worshippers received only their allotted amount of holy water. Cheesecake was also invented in ancient Greece, which was made out of flour, 
wheat, honey, and cheese. These delicious treats were not only a part of wedding traditions, but were also given to competitors in the Olympics for energy. Can you imagine eating cheesecake for breakfast before running a marathon? So the next time you enjoy a slice of cheesecake or use a vending machine, remember that these inventions have been around for thousands of years.